Introducing the SRM2M, the next generation of mechanical systems releasing module. The SRM2M will replace the SRM. After the introduction of the SRM2M, the SRM will no longer be available. The model SRM-D will continue to be available. This is the SRM-2 shown in the set position. In the upper right corner is the detection slide plate. It moves to the right when tension is applied to the fusible link line. The fusible link line enters the control head through the upper right side knockout and connects to the detection ratchet spool. This is the remote pull station line. It enters the control head through the upper left side knockout. It passes through one of the holes in the locking arm and is crimped. The locking arm holds the trigger arm in the set position. The actuation lever will engage the gas valve ratchet spool and places the micro switches in their normal position. The mechanical gas valve line enters the control head through the middle left side knockout and attaches to the gas valve ratchet spool. The cable can then be tightened by turning the gas valve ratchet spool clockwise. The micro switch wires exit the control head through the lower left side knockout. Installing additional micro switches. If additional contacts are required, a model MSDPDT or a model MSAIS alarm initiating switch can be field installed in the SRM2. Installing the model MSDPDT. A double pole, double throw micro switch can be field mounted to the front of the manifold block using the hardware provided. The wiring must be run through the middle right side knockout. Be sure to push the wiring back out of the way of the actuation cartridge and check the operation of the micro switch. Installing the model MSAIS alarm initiating switch. An alarm initiating switch must be used when connecting to an alarm panel in accordance with NFPA 72. It is field mounted to the front of the manifold block using the hardware provided. The wiring used to connect the alarm initiating switch must be run through the middle right side knockout. The SRM2 can either be directly mounted to the cylinder valve or remotely mounted on any flat surface. Mounting the SRM2 directly to a cylinder valve. Make sure that the O-ring seal is in place and not damaged. Partially install two of the socket head screws provided into the two threaded holes located in the back of the manifold block, leaving about three quarters of an inch exposed. Slide the screws into the slots located in the back of the valve, then push the control head down onto the valve body, which will seat the O-ring.
Then insert the two additional socket head screws through the front mounting holes and secure them with the locking nuts provided. Tighten the locking nuts with a 7 16 inch wrench while holding the screws with a 3 16 inch Allen wrench. The Allen wrench can then be used to tighten the back screws until secure. Mounting the SRM-2M remotely from the cylinder valve. When mounted remotely, it is connected to the cylinder valve using copper tubing and a valve cap. When mounting the SRM-2 remotely, it must be securely mounted to any flat surface using four screws that are inserted through the four mounting holes located in the back of the enclosure. These screws are not provided. The SRM2 can then be connected to the cylinder valve using quarter inch copper tubing and a valve cap. This is the only method to connect multiple cylinders to the control head. In order to connect the copper tubing to the control head, apply Teflon tape to the tubing adapter provided and then install it into the 8th inch NPT threaded hole located in the bottom of the manifold block. Securely tighten the tubing adapter using a 7 16 inch wrench. Setting the SRM2M. Once the SRM2 is installed, and connected to the fusible link line, the remote manual pull station line, and the mechanical gas valve line, it can be placed in the set position. First, rotate the detection ratchet spool clockwise until the slot is facing the right side of the control head. To ensure there is enough detection cable, extend the cable to the far end of the SRM2 and install a crimp. This must be done with all fusible link holders and fusible links in place. Insert the cable through the slot in the detection ratchet spool, placing the crimp in the center of the spool. Remove the slack in the fusible link line by turning the ratchet spool clockwise. Once the slack has been removed, a 3 8 inch drive ratchet with a 3 inch extension can be used to slowly turn the ratchet spool by continuing to rotate it clockwise. This will cause the detection slide plate to move to the right, allowing the locking arm to fall into its horizontal position. Continue to tighten the detection line until the indicator screw aligns with the green zone on the detection slide plate. After tightening the fusible link line, Use the ratchet to place the trigger arm in the set position. Insert the extension bar into the square hole in the trigger arm and rotate it clockwise. The trigger arm will interlock with the locking screw and the actuation lever will engage the gas valve ratchet spool. Verify that the actuation lever is engaged with the gas valve ratchet spool by turning the ratchet spool and the micro switch paddles are no longer touching the actuation lever. Extend the remote pull station cable so that the crimped end is approximately 1 to 2 inches past the logging arm. To set the mechanical gas valve Orient the gas valve ratchet spool so that the slot is pointed to the left side of the control head. 
Insert the crimped end of the mechanical gas valve cable into the ratchet spool and slowly turn it clockwise until the valve stem is fully extended. Caution: Do not over tighten the mechanical gas valve line once the mechanical gas valve stem has been extended to its full open position. The SRM2 is now in the set position and the nitrogen actuation cartridge can be installed. Installing the nitrogen actuation cartridge. Before installing the cartridge, insert the actuation pin resetting tool into the actuation port of the manifold block. Then thread it fully into the port until the firing pin is completely extended on the left side of the manifold block. Verify that there is a space between the actuation pin and the actuation lever. If the actuation pin is touching the actuation lever, remove the resetting tool and check that the cartridge gasket is in place and not damaged. After removing the resetting tool, the actuation cartridge can be installed. Only a Buckeye Fire Equipment actuation cartridge shall be installed. Before the cartridge is installed, verify that the cartridge is not punctured and weighs more than the stated minimum gross weight printed on the cartridge. Install the cartridge by completely threading it into the manifold block. Record the installation date on the gray band. After recording the installation date on the gray band, the SRM2 is now fully functional and the cover can be installed using the four screws provided. In the left observation window, you will see the actuation arm is in the set position. In the right observation window, the actuation cartridge is visible. How to install and remove the keeper pin. Before installing the keeper pin, remove the nitrogen actuation cartridge from the manifold block and set it aside. The keeper pin can now be installed by inserting it fully into the keeper pin hole. Before removing the keeper pin, make sure that the SRM2 is returned to the set position. After the keeper pin has been removed, the nitrogen actuation cartridge and cover plate can be installed. The SRM2 is now fully functional and back in service. From all of us at Buckeye Fire Equipment, we would like to thank you for your support. We hope this video has been informative. If you have any questions, please give us a call.